Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna be dis discussing the top three mistakes uh, new self-publishers make when they're entering the Amazon KDP business. So if that interests you, then stay around and we'll get right to it. All right, so mistake number one. This one is quite a big one and it's poor keyword research or sometimes even no keyword research. So a lot of time we see new self-publishers who try to publish a book without actually making sure that they're publishing in a niche that has high demand and low competition. And so we do this by using Amazon's BSR ranking system in order to find profitable book topics. So um, and to explain what the BSR ranking system is, the BSR is basically the Amazon bestsellers rank. So the BSR ranking system is essentially just Amazon's way of ranking all of their products. So BSR stands for best sellers rank and there's obviously quite a lot more to this. So we do have another video that will link for you to um, learn about how to actually find profitable keywords. But this is just to note that it is one of the biggest mistakes that new self publishers make. And it's really important to make sure you're actually finding profitable book topics. Otherwise your book simply will not sell and you won't make money. So Another thing is that you want to make sure that you're actually including these keywords with the higher search volume with the highest search volume into your title so that people will actually find your book because if you're not including that, then your book's not gonna show up anywhere. And lastly, uh, this is just really important. So take your time with keyword research. Don't rush and don't settle on a book topic until you've actually found a profitable one. It can be a t uh, quite a time consuming uh, part of the process. Yeah. In fact, it probably is the the most time consuming part, really of the tedious, whole, yeah. part of the whole process. Um, but if you get it right and you find a particular book topic which is very, very profitable, that makes it much easier to actually launch your book. Yeah, if you're definitely. publishing in a more competitive niche, um, then it's going to be much more difficult to actually get going. But if it's high demand and low competition, then you're on to a winner, as long as you do the other steps right. Yeah. And sometimes people think that it's kind of impossible to find a book that has high demand and low competition, but they're there, you just have to look hard enough. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely there, they're definitely there. And they'll always be there because there's always new topics coming up. Yeah. And then there's always um, underserved niches which can exactly. always be exploited. Exactly. <clears throat> okay, so mistake number two, this is, is a really, really big one, is poor quality book covers. So please don't make mistake of putting together an amazing book and then just ruining it with a poor, unprofessional uh, looking book cover design. It is the first thing that your customers will see uh, about your book is the book cover. So when someone types in a particular keyword or a search term into the Amazon search bar, Amazon will present them with a list of potential books that fit their, their search term. And if your book cover is just really bland and boring and it's not gonna catch their right, they're just gonna continue to scroll straight past your book cover and not even give it a second thought. Yeah. And even, yeah, if you have an amazing book content, you're gonna ruin it with a, book, a bad book cover. Yeah, people won't even get to the content if they don't decide to buy your book because you have a bad book cover, so. Yeah, and we see it, we've seen it a lot actually. And it, even for a couple of our books, which we thought had a really good book cover uh, and weren't selling too well, we went in and actually got well, our now favorite design, a cover designer who we always use, um, and redid the cover design, and then the sales went up by mm -hmm. quite a significant, um, quite a significant degree. So it's really important. And two places where you can get them designed are Fiverr or Ninety Nine Designs. So quickly, Fiverr is a freelance service where it's not just book cover designs. It can pretty much be anything you can think yeah. of. A service on Fiverr is offered, uh, but all you need to do is go over to Fiverr and then just type in book cover design, type in non, actually type in non-fiction book cover design, okay? Because yeah. there's a big difference between fiction and non-fiction cover designers. So yeah. you're gonna look, go for a really high quality non-fiction cover designer. And you can get really good um, book cover designs for $10, $20, even $30. Yeah, uh, so have a look around and then uh, you can play around with the different parameters to find uh, a good fit for you. But also 99 Designs. Uh, this is how we first came across the cover design which, which we now use. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different ways of, I will let you check it out yourself, but essentially you can actually launch a competition where I think it's for $150, something like that. You have a competition and then um, all the cover, is your brief is put out to all the cover designers on 99 Designs and they can submit an entry to your cover design and then you're left with, well, about 60, 70 designs of different cover designs from different yeah. designers, and then you can choose your favorite one. Obviously, if you heard that, the $150, it is, comes at a bigger price, 
Uh, but if you have the budget to really go for that, then uh, that could be, be something you'll that you definitely could get recommend. a good cover from that one if you do spend the money. Yeah, yeah. there's no doubt that you're going to get a good cover design out of six, You get so six many to options that it's like impossible to not have Imposs- it is one that you one. like and that will do well for your book. Yeah, so either option is really good and it might be depending on your bu- uh, on your budget. So yeah. have a look at both of those. Definitely. Cool. So on that note, we're just going to go ahead and go to Amazon and look at some different book covers. <laughs> Okay, so what we've done now is gone over, gone over to Amazon and just typed in greenhouse gardening to the book section. So let's have a little look at some cover designs and see what we think about them and which ones catch our eye, basically. I really like that one. <laughs> yeah, I think we've actually talked about a couple, couple oh, of other, um, oh, no, this, this kind of design on a couple of other videos. It's just that illustration kind oh. of uh, look to it. It looks really, really yeah, good. Yeah. And yeah, you like that one. I lo- absolutely love that cover. Yeah, it looks that absolutely really amazing. Good one. And you can see that it's uh, ranking at 16,000 BSI ranking. Really, really so really, a really good BSI ranking. This one just looks boring. It looks outdated. Yeah. And it wouldn't catch my eye at all. So there's a certain sort of design which look quite dated. And it's just this, you know, uh, uh, title, subtitle picture. And that's what this cover design is going for. It's actually not ranking too badly, yeah. interestingly enough. But with a good cover a better cover it's not like a terrible cover cover, to be fair but a better cover might just stand out more and people might buy even more of them (laughs) yeah definitely uh again these look pretty cool here so it's this illustration which looks really really good that's really that's really cool yeah that must be a new one i haven't seen that one before 39 of course 40 dollars retailing for and it's got bsr ranking of thirty five thousand. so that's doing really really well (laughs) this one look yeah it looks a bit boring this one again it's got that outdated uh, design of the title subtitle and then the picture and the author name not very creative not very creative at all again outdated outdated might be selling fairly well no not selling well at all actually so even with 869 reviews it's only selling at 119,000 BSR ranking so only a couple of sales a day really so hopefully what we recommend is go to Amazon and kind of just type in a few book topics which interest you and just scroll down the page and just think which ones catch your eye because at the end of the day yeah. you're a customer and uh, your potential customers are also customers so you want to try and get in their heads as to what looks good what doesn't look good and for the niche that you're potentially publishing in yeah definitely. another thing that you can do as well is when you're actually then going to get your cover made once you've gotten all of your designs back you can send them off to like your friends and your family to see which ones they like that way you don't have to make the decision on your own because covers can be quite subjective in the sense that like something that you like might not be something that other people like and we know this firsthand because there was one point where we got a bunch of book covers back and we personally didn't like the one that all of our friends and families ended up liking so um we ended up going with the one that they liked and it's it's doing well for it but we personally didn't like it so it's, it's sometimes better to just sort of get that second opinion from and then we, to add to that story then we actually changed it halfway th- like a couple of months into the uh, when it was live on Amazon, we actually changed it to one that we preferred to see if that... And it, was doing, and it started doing worse. <laughs> and it started, it started doing worse yeah. again. So we changed it back to the original one, which everyone else liked and we didn't like, and it's doing good again. Yeah. So um, you definitely take the view of yeah. the mass rather than your personal opinion, I would yeah, say. That's for, just to sort covers. of iterate how important the cover is as well. So. Yes. All right, so the third mistake is not having a real proper launch strategy. So... Another thing that a lot of new self-publishers do is they'll like they'll get their book and they'll be really excited to put it out, which is all obviously very great, but then they'll literally just kind of whack it onto Amazon and hope that it sells without having any plan for sort of getting reviews and actually giving it a proper launch into the Amazon algorithm to make sure that it will sell from um, really early on. So again, this is this kind of goes back to what we were saying about like having, you could have a really, really good book and even if the cover is really good as well, um, if you don't get it out in front of your customers properly, then it won't do very well from the off. And as we kind of mentioned with the Amazon algorithm, if so with the Amazon algorithm, they like to push things out that they know are going to sell well because if your book is selling well, you're also making Amazon money. So you have to make sure that you're doing really well in the beginning because that way Amazon will be more inclined to actually push your book out to even more customers. So that's why the early days are so important. So um, there are a couple ways or a couple things that we have um, just basically in order to have a good launch strategy. So yeah, so number, first one is definitely building uh, an ARC team, which stands for an advanced reader copy team. Uh, essentially, what you're going to be doing is you can be sending out your uh, uh, ebook version of your book mm-hmm. to early readers. 
this I wouldn't send this out to family, but you could do it to people that you know potentially on like Facebook. Acquaintances. Acquaintances. Yeah. No um, direct friends or anything like no that. No direct yeah. friends, yeah. Um, or potentially going on to Facebook groups, which are uh, to do with your niche and going in them and reaching out to a few people on there. Or potentially onto Reddit, onto yeah. like subreddit, um, subreddit threads. Yeah, and so basically find like people on there to actually um, yeah. get your book, to read it before you actually launch it. Mm-hmm. And then when you're ready to launch it, so normally, normally we do this around two to four weeks before we actually launch, building up our team of earlier readers. They read the book, and then when we launch it on Amazon, um, within the first week to two weeks of us launching it, we then send out to them a, uh, a review link. Mm-hmm. where they can click on it and then leave a review for your book. Yeah. It counts as an unverified review on Amazon and will only count on the place where uh, the person lives. So if they're in America, it will count as Amazon on, on Amazon.com only. If it's in the UK, Amazon.co.uk only. Okay, yes. uh, But it's a really, really good way of just get, getting uh, lots and lots of reviews early on your book. The more yeah, reviews definitely. you have early in the book, as you said beforehand, uh, the more the Amazon algorithm, algorithm will favor you and then continue to push out your book. And it kind of has that snowballing effect sometimes. Whereas if you have you know, no ARC team at all and you put it out there, uh, your book won't do that well. It's as, yeah. sim- it's as simple as that. And you can also use um, free promo days on Amazon. Um, so what this is, um, is Amazon will allow you to Push up to five days. Yeah, yeah. so oh, I allow, allow, allow you to push your book out to um, any customers that want it, free of charge for five a maximum of five days, and uh, you can also use Book Doggy and Free Booksy. So this will actually tie in with the days that you've put on Amazon for free, and at Book Doggy and Free Booksy um, have a list of thousands and thousands of readers. So they will then promote your book to their readers. And they'll download your their, yeah, they'll download your book for free and read it. The benefit this has is kind of twofold. The people who are downloading it for free, a few of them will probably leave a review on your book, which will help as we just discussed. But also, it'll actually help the algorithm on Amazon because it's going to uh, signify to Amazon that your book's getting downloaded a lot. Yes, it's for free. Yes, you won't be making money from it, but it, it, you've got to think long term. The more uh, downloads you get, the more Amazon will actually start to favour you over other books. Yeah. And just to add on to that, so the way that you actually do that is you set up the days on Amazon first and you get the actual date. So if you're doing it, say, like December 17th and 18th, you then take those dates over to BookDoggy to have them send the alert out to their readers for for those dates. That way it's linked and they um, don't miss the free promo days. Yes, good point. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up the three um, major mistakes that we always see new self-publishers making. So hopefully now that you've seen this video, you can avoid those. So we'll link all the resources that we've mentioned in this video down below in the description. And as always, don't forget to give us a subscribe if you're finding the content helpful, hopefully you are. And let us know in the comments as well if there are any other subjects that you would like us to clarify or speak about uh, so that it can hopefully help you. Awesome, guys. Yeah, hope you enjoy that and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.